First off, I want to say that it was a great experience to go to England. I've always wanted to go to England. We got to see some pretty cool things, but that's not why we went. We went in a thousand-year-old church over there that I kind of thought was weird. They got they got dead people buried all in that church, and got got a king and a, a grandparents of a king and a queen up on the up in the pulpit behind the pulpit, and a, one of King Henry the Eighth's many wives is buried in that church. They call her the woman in waiting. And it's a kind of weird experience. Guy come upstairs. He was a vicar. And, all this stuff, but uh, we got to see some cool stuff, but that's not why we went. Yeah. Why we went was to go over there and minister the Bible to people. Yep. And uh, I kept hearing from people over there, oh, England's cold, England's cold. Y'all won't, you know, you know, you just wait and see. I tell you right now, we had more fruit over there than we've ever had in America. Uh, the British still want to talk, even if they disagree with you. They still believe in freedom of speech and open dialogue. Americans just want to shut everything down because Americans are not comfortable in their beliefs and they don't want it exposed. Uh, we went, the first city we went to was a city called Bath. <laughs> right? I call it Bath. You know, but they call it Bath. But uh, it was a city founded by the Romans, built by the Romans. Still a lot of Roman architecture in the city. Felt like we was walking back into the book of Acts. Yes, sir. And uh, the buildings there just felt like we were standing where, and in fact, John, the locals told us that John Wesley had preached there in the 1700s. It had always been a, a city of lasciviousness, just public debauchery. And, and John Wesley walked right up that street we preached on and got to the top of the hill and washed his hands of the city and went to Bristol the city over. But we had some great experiences there in Bath. Uh, things that only God could have done. Yes, sir. And all these people who think God's not doing things today, get out and do something for God and you'll see what he's doing. Uh, we, we flew 4,000 miles. If you, if you take Gary Roverino, he came from Arizona all the way to Bath, England, and just happened upon a boy wearing a necklace that he designs and sells. Right there. His mother bought it while she was in America, gave it to him, and Gary just happened. How many, how many necklaces do you think Gary's designed and sold that were in England? Yeah. And he saw one. He saw one. Walked those two boys down to me, and I led that boy's best friend, that boy's friend to the Lord. Amen. Right there in the streets. Another woman we seen walking down the street, she just stopped dead in her tracks while Eric was preaching and started listening. Just stopped dead in her tracks. And I looked at Cole and I was like, go give her a gospel track. She said, I already have. And then somebody else went over and gave her a gospel track. Well, she went and sat down and just kept listening and listening. When Eric got done, he went over and started witnessing to her. And he said, you know, I, I came 4,000 miles to share the gospel with you. And she said, she said, that's strange because I woke up this morning and I just had a, a desire to come to Bath from Northern Ireland and flew 400 miles to be here. Got saved. Amen. Another woman walked up to Eric just bawling and crying. Asked him if he, asked him if he could pay, pray her son out of purgatory. And Eric kind of avoided all that and ended up leading that woman to the Lord. Uh, we went to Bournemouth the next day. Uh, Bournemouth, England. It was a, uh, it was a great place to street preach, but the spirit there was a little, little meaner. <laughs> you know, we, we had a boy walk up to Cole. I don't even know if Cole remembers this. Remember the guy walked up to you and said he was the devil? And you don't remember that? <laughs> he came, he came up to Cole and said, and said, he said, when we die, that's all there is. There ain't nothing happens when we die. And I said, well, get on with your life then, buddy. I was, Cause I mean, that's an underage kid there, man. And he saw him as uh, easy prey, and I said, get on with your life, everybody. And then he turned around and said, I'm the devil. I said, no, you're not. I said, the devil's up in the, in the heavenly places. And I said, Jesus Christ made a fool of the devil when he died on the cross and rose from the dead. Amen. He said, you're a fool, you're a fool, you're a fool. He said, you're just scared to die. And I said, you got the wrong group, buddy. Ain't a, one, ain't a person standing here scared to die. 
But we, we, I mean, there was, a, there was about, I think there was four or five people led to the Lord in Bournemouth that day. Uh, a couple people came to church that night and heard the preaching from Bournemouth. Uh, what was the other city we went to? Southampton. Southampton was the, I mean, but Michael Booker's wife led, led, just sitting on a bench. I think she led five people to the Lord just sitting there on the bench listening to the preaching. Uh, Booker led a couple people to the Lord that day. Um, just a great experience, guys. But not only was it the street preaching, but the opportunity we had, we had 40, probably 40 to 50 people every, every night at that hall that I preached that came out and, and, and many of them was recovered from the snare of the devil. Amen. They come up and told me that they, they come out of the snare of religion Amen. and, uh, and they, they learned, they, they saw what was going on. And, and how a lot of people over there are cold at religion. Yes. Yes. England has been under the Church of England, which is watered down Roman Catholicism, for, for over 500 years, and the people despise it. But when you take that Bible and you give them the truth, they want to hear it. Amen. They want to hear it. And we've been on the streets here, and I ain't never seen anybody get, get saved on the streets here. Amen. People over there are more open to talk about the Bible than some Christians are in America. Lost people in the streets. They'll, talk, they'll say, they'll, they'll walk up to you. Some, I mean, I had many people that would walk by, hear the preaching, and turn and walk over and get a gospel track. Say, I want to see what this is about. Did you have that? Some of them said they didn't want them. You had to try to hand them to some people, but a lot of people, I had a lot of people walk up to me and say, let me see that. And it was hard for me because in America, like I had a guy walk up to me when I was preaching and I was, I was standing in the street asking him, I, I said, will you not fear God? Will you people not fear God? And I seen this guy come, man, strutting like a peacock, man, had that chest puffed out, just walking right at me. And in America, I'm, I've got that mindset, this guy's coming to fight. He's coming to start trouble. Well, Adrian, like, cut him off. I said, do you have a question, sir? And he said, for him. And I said, what? And he said, am I supposed to fear God? And I said, yes. He said, but God, God doesn't exist. And I said, well, have a good day. And I just went and started preaching. But they ended up talking to that guy for about 45 minutes. That guy was just trying to have a conversation. And I read it wrong. I read it wrong because I'm used to that American mentality. That guy was really walking over to have a conversation. He got called out right there in the streets. And this guy had, this guy had, his problem was he had, he had, he had get, gotten saved, got wrapped up in the mystery of iniquity that we call religion and ended up not believing in God anymore because none of the stuff he tried to put into practice worked. Amen. But it was a great experience over there, guys. And, and believe it or not, I keep, I always hear about how nice Americans are, how nice Americans are. I've been to the Philippines and I've been to England. Both countries put us to shame. They put us to shame. I mean, just the service over there is better. The, the, the manners, little children over there have better manners than grownups in America. And it was just, it was, it was a great experience. And we were in the bad part of England. They say the further north you get, the nicer they get. I mean, it was just, just completely different over there. And it was a great experience. And y'all need to keep them in prayer because Michael Booker and James Lemon, right there in Wimborne, England, and Booker has paid for this. He's paid for it. He got kicked out of a Ruckman night church because he listened to me. And Booker was this close. His, his wife has struggled with it because they haven't had fellowship. She's, she's missed the fellowship with other saints. And, and he was close to trying to move here. And now God is doing something there. I've seen it. I've seen it with him and James Lemon. And, and, and it's uh, those guys' zeal to get out on the streets and preach and, and to get the truth back. And it's, it's just like, it's almost like, like, like Gary said, it's almost like the King James Bible has just like a tide of the ocean 
has went all the way out, swept across America, and is working its way back to Jerusalem. Right back through, through, through the English island. And it's them people, I, I seen it, them people, them people are, are, are prepped and primed to receive the word of God over there. They really are. And, uh, and any questions on anything? And, and that being said, I want to thank, I want to thank Michael Booker and his wife and all that they did over there. I want to thank James Lemon. And I want to thank all the people out that we couldn't have done this without your support. All the money that you gave, and uh, and we wouldn't have been able to do it without that. And it was a great opportunity, guys. Things happened over there; they really happened. I mean, people got saved, and and Booker Booker's church probably doubled in size. He said, just from from us being there. And uh, and he's got men around him now that that are ready to go to war. They're ready to go to work. And that's all it takes, man. You get two or three men together and you've got something. Yes, sir. Amen. And uh, so y'all keep them in prayer. And any questions about it? Kensington, have a good time. <laughs> that boy, that, I mean, that, every time I looked out on the streets, man, he was standing there with a sign passing out gospel tracks. <laughs> Got to meet a guy from Sweden. He flew down from Sweden, another work course, another work course. He never, he never preached the whole time we were in the streets, but he, every time you looked over, he was just chasing people down, man, just tracks, tracks. People like tracks. to go around us because the light, and he would be standing on the wall, God on there trying to avoid us, and he'd be right there. Yeah. 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 Got to hear him sing, Are You Washed in the Blood in, in, in the Swedish Tongue, man, that was... That was an amazing thing. And he, he, the only word you could understand is blood. Blood. You'd hear him say blood. <laughs> then he, he sung uh, How Great Thou Art in Swedish. I didn't even know that. That's a Swedish hymn. He said that was their hymn and it got translated into English. And, and he sung that for us. And then we met a couple. Uh, the second day we were there in Bournemouth. I got there late, and there was a man and woman sent down there talking to my brother. They're originally from South Africa, but they're migrating and getting their citizenship in England. Been listening to me for our church for five years and found out we were going to be there. And just They said they came to Bournemouth by luck, just hoping we would be there, and said they heard us before they ever saw us. They, they just followed the preaching and found us. Their names were uh, Gavin and Yana. Sweet people, sweet people. He went, he went, the, the, when we went to South Hampton, he went and bought me two bags of like South African groceries, <laughs> man. Just a sweet guy. Had a bunch of beef, like uh, he, they call it bull tongue. I thought I was really going to be eating bull tongue, but <laughs> I don't know why they call it bull tongue. It was like a beef jerky. And then uh, met a, a guy came down from Northern Ireland named, named Alan. Flew down from Northern Ireland, street preached with them. Been watching us for five years here. Guys, this church has got fruit. This church has got fruit. I mean, look, just look, when I, when I got here, man, this church had a few people in it. We've, I mean, God has grew the number of this church, and he's, he's growing it out and about, too. God is doing things out of this church. We need to be thankful for it. Glorify him in it. Amen. Alan, who else did we meet over there? Boy came down from Scotland. <laughs> St. Andrews. <laughs> the Irish and the Scottish are a little hard to understand. They speak English. That Alan guy, he'd sit there and talk to you, and then he'd look at you and go, he'd look at you and go, you don't understand me, do you? <laughs> uh, uh, I felt like the foreigners here that just... Shake their head and smile. <laughs> but he was a sweet guy, though, man. Alan was a very sweet guy. But uh, that's all I got, guys, on the on the trip to England. It was a great time. I know I'm leaving a lot out, man, but it was it was a blessing. It was a blessing. I didn't get to go with them the last day to pool. 
Uh, I had to stay back and study. But uh, one one day we went and saw a, uh, they took us to Corfe Castle. It's a castle that was built by William the Conqueror in like 1000 AD. And uh, been, I mean, that thing's over a thousand years old and they're keeping it restored. And there's a real little, just a quaint little village down at the base of it, man. Little cottages, little stone cottages. It was a beautiful place. England's beautiful. I was blown away by the beauty of that country. I really was. I wasn't expecting it. I was expecting it to, as old as it is, I was expecting it to be overpopulated, overrun, decaying, and that is a beautiful, beautiful land over there. It really is. Reminds me a lot of places in, that I grew up in West Virginia, just rolling farmlands and, and stuff like that. It's a beautiful country. And I'd love to go up north and see the highlands of Scotland one day, but it was they took us to places on the English Channel, man, just beautiful. It was just beautiful everywhere. Big, big like solid white cliffs right there on the shore, and just a pretty place. How was the flight with the evangelizing? Huh? No, we were setting. We were all setting together. Eric, on when we got on the. Uh, you know, at airports, you ride them little transit trains out to the terminals. And the one in uh, London, we got on the back, and we all got back towards the back, and they would already determined Eric was going to preach. And as soon as we started rolling, Eric just preached that whole transit line out to the people on the transit train. People got the gospel, man. Everywhere we went, people got the gospel. We come, we'd come out, of, we'd get done eating at a pub and come out and the drunks would be pouring out of it late at night and Steve would stand there across the street and preach at them the whole time they're walking down the street. So they got the gospel, man. It was, it was a great experience. And I hope the young men learned something from it. My, my sons, you guys, I hope they, hope they learned something from it. They were workhorses too. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, well, that's all I got until the morning service, unless you guys got something.